So what is it like to be a ZOS Systems Programmer day in and day out? Well, my name is Connor, and I've been a ZOS Systems Programmer for three years now at our nation's largest insurance company, and I'm going to speak to you through my experiences what it's like to be a ZOS Systems Programmer. So let's talk about the major teams and areas that are going to be in a mainframe shop. If you are a Systems Programmer, you are going to land on one of these teams that I'm about to talk about. So what are these teams? So you, you got the networking team, the core teams are the networking team, the operating systems team, the storage team, and the operations team. You know, the networking team is maintaining all the connections. Some mainframe shops have hundreds of different LPARs that all need to have connections to each other and they're on, they're on task for troubleshooting. The operating systems team is making sure that the latest version of ZOS is up to date. They also do, um, they also manage the maintenance in, um, they manage it through something called a ResLive, a resident library, which has all the most important software products in it. And then it methodically goes, uh, progresses throughout like test, um, stimulation prod, production. And a lot of different applications team put their products on the ResLive when they ride the ResLive. Um, so the operating systems team manages that, ZOS, ZOS MF, and a couple more core things. The storage team, very important. Whenever uh, some app product or LPAR needs more storage allocated physically, virtually, they're, they're on top of that. Um, of course, you got the operations team. The operations team is funny because uh, back in the, in the early days of computing, those are the people like when your program needed to run at midnight, they would like put the punch cards in the machine and put the tape reel um, on the spool and they would actually like run your program. You know, in 2023 here, we don't need people to run our programs for us, but if you're at a big legacy organization, the operations team, you'll assign a, 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 a service ticket or a change ticket to them and then they'll run your program for you and uh, examine the output for you usually at three o'clock in the morning. So hats off to operations team. Um, so let's go into some of the more functionality based teams. You, you're going to have a language support team. Maybe uh, there is like 15 plus different languages that could run on a mainframe, probably more. And they're responsible for installing and maintaining these language environments on your mainframe. Also, you're going to have an MQ team. They manages the uh, the queue for the mainframe environment. You're also going to have a data engineering team. So the two major data products on ZOS are IMS, Information Management System, and DB2 for ZOS. Uh, IMS is good because you have lightning fast transaction times. It's like the front door. Um, easy to manage way easy to manage transactions with IMS, and it's also a front door to the second big data management team, DB2 for ZOS. This is one of the very first huge relational database management uh, softwares that a lot of our core uh, banks, airlines, and other essential financial industries, legacy ones, run on. Uh, DB2 um, could has a lot of different options for you to define. So it makes it harder to work with, but we'll talk about that later. Um, the other major teams in a, in a mainframe shop, you're also going to have more application facing teams, a DevOps team uh, who documents the best way to build and deploy applications. You're gonna have a scheduling team with schedulers. When you have to do a scheduling change, you assign a change task to them, or you can be on the automation team, which helps all of the teams plus the actual application groups um, do automation that interacts with ZOS. So if you're a ZOS systems programmer, you could land on any or many of the teams that I just described. So now let's talk about the day in the life of one of these uh, DB2, one of these systems programmers, not just on DB2. So we are solving problems with code. That is a mantra that goes for every IT, um, Unix, wi uh, Windows, Linux, everybody's solving problems with code. We're doing that in the mainframe too, but we're just using different tools than everybody else and some of the same tools. Um, so what tools do we use to solve problems with code 
on the mainframe, of course, we got job control language. That is um, one of the main ways we uh, enact functionality on our mainframe. Um, it's it, every line in a, in a JCL used to be uh, a physical card about this size. And now uh, we have we get to write JCL programs in graphic text, which is a lot better. But it, it's a way that we could um, set up multiple like little sub programs called job steps to run. And what makes it different than other programming languages is that we have to be very specific and specify all the configurations, a lot more configurations than we would in other programming languages, like what um, data sets to use, how much memory to allocate for every little thing. Um, but uh, after you get past the uh, those hard parts with JCL, the nitty gritty, the granular things, it's actually a lot of functionality packed into there. So we use a lot of JCL, we use a lot of Rex too. Rex is a high level programming language, which we are all a lot more used to using. That is a lot like Python or C, it's just all the keywords are different. And Rex is great because it can interface with every part of the ZOS operating system that you need. So it's really like a one size fits all automation solution for your ZOS environment. And the earlier you learn Rex in your ZOS journey, the more advanced you're going to become uh, faster. Uh, I'm also solving a lot of problems with stored procedures, uh, particularly DB2 stored procedures. Stored procedures are great. Uh, it's a great skill to, to acquire, uh, even if you plan on moving off the ZOS platform, or just for any enterprise, really, because the advantages of using a stored procedure are speed and security. So if you have an application that needs to do some data operations on a relational database, if you have a stored procedure defined on the database server itself already, your application only needs to call a little piece of SQL and it only needs the authorization to call only the stored procedure. And then all the data operations happen on the computer that's closest to the data. And then only what you need is returned. Rather than if your computer was, or if your program was able to run or allowed to run any SQL at once on the database, then it can do anything at once, SQL injection. But if it's only allowed to run that stored procedure, then they can only do what the stored procedure can do. So stored procedures are great for any large scale enterprises. They're very efficient, very safe to use. You'll be writing a lot of stored procedures in a mainframe shop. I hope you are. Great skill to carry forward. You're also gonna be doing a lot of technical recovery planning. Uh, outages do happen on the mainframe, although they are short and frequent and far between. But having a solid technical recovery plan and every uh, main team has, as part of that plan, they have all the other test cases. So you will be involved in that as a systems programmer, or at least one unlucky soul on your team will. So what kind of problems are you being asked to solve uh, as a systems programmer? Well, you can be doing automation. So like uh, writing a automated recovery. So if there is an outage, uh, the recovery steps become automated. You can be asked to uh, enable REST APIs on data that already lives in the mainframe. There is tons of ways to enable REST APIs for the mainframe. You can do it in DB2 itself uh, through a REST call. You can uh, define a REST API in GCL. There is products that help you define REST APIs. I'm talking about ZCEE -E and ZOE. Um, ZOSMF, ZOS Management Facility has REST APIs you can call to uh, read data sets in the mainframe. So the, the ZOS system has come a long way. It's now very REST enabled and you can be asked to define REST APIs to help your application teams who are running business logic access data, uh, maybe from the cloud on the mainframe through REST APIs. Um, let's talk about some other problems I've been asked to solve. I've been asked to, uh, by an application area during change windows, they wanted to uh, block like 500 or more IDs during their change window and I wrote a stored procedure that uh, blocks them at the from the database level. They used to ban the ID from the whole all of ZOS and rack up 
And that's kind of like a big hammer. A smaller hammer would just be blocking them from the database. So we had a stored procedure, you know, fill up a core table that, that blocks those IDs. Um, so that they can better govern their change window. Let's talk about some other things you do as a, as a ZOS systems programmer. You're going to be managing products. So a lot of third-party products come in. A lot of uh, software maintenance strategies need to be developed. Every product is different. Can have a more aggressive or or cautious, or conservative uh, maintenance strategy. Um, some teams are on the the bleeding edge of maintenance all the time, trying to get in front of those problems and catch them right away and send them back to the vendor. Uh, other t other organizations a little bit more conservative like banks like they won't put uh, new software patches on for like a full year and they want every other person in the industry to you know test out the software and let the kinks come out before they they go on so some organizations are kind of like in, in a slow race like hey you go first with this maintenance no you go first with this maintenance um, and then other organizations are like just show me what it hurts and they, they throw it in tests let the, let the bugs crop up and and they, they, they liaison with the vendors there. So expanding on product management, a lot of what you're going to be doing you know, is the software patches, managing user problems that come up when users think they're, they're, they're having a hard time using the product or they think it's having an error. They'll interface with you, the product manager. And then if you think the problem is a product problem or a bug, you'll interface with the vendor, uh, usually through cases or support representative and try to bring solutions to your business partners that way. What other things are asked of systems programmers? Uh, well, when the, the business part, when the business developers are doing the business logic, they have an infrastructure need, they'll go to the architect and the architect will decide whether are we going to home code, home grow a solution for this problem? Are we gonna ask the vendor for a solution? Are we gonna try to find an off the shelf product? Usually, um, you're going to home code it or ask the vendor, and I've had a lot of fun home coding solutions, and I'm always trying to use Rex whenever I can. Maybe in the future, um, our descendants will get to use Python on the mainframe. The, the problem with Python on the mainframe in an enterprise environment is that it has to call, this is what I heard, you ha it has to call like Python home. Like every Python instruction is trying to make uh, an internet call um, to somewhere on the internet to, to get more instructions and the, the language support people are just like, I can't um, let Python just call anywhere at once on the internet. So it's, it's really just not feasible to, for a lot of large enterprises to run Python on the mainframe because it has to make HTTP REST calls or internet calls with every single keyword instruction. But there is hope because there is the Zoe project, which provides uh, like a like a Unix command, like a command driven way to interact with your mainframe. Um, kind of the same architecture as Kubernetes, how it's like all these commands that you can enter in your command line and they make rest calls and the rest calls go to your mainframe and they do a lot of really interesting um, automated things on your mainframe. All you gotta do is set up these two started tasks on your mainframe, the Zoe launcher and the Zoe cross memory server. It's a pain to set up those those little started tasks on your on your mainframe. But once you do, the, the gifts are tremendous because you get a uh, command line language, like a shell script that runs on your workstation that could manage your whole mainframe. It can manage the ZOS uh, software management flows. It, it can really do a lot. It's it's in its early stages, but hopefully, uh, people a couple years from now will get a lot of a lot of use out of the Zoe uh, commands and the Zoe web experiences that are coming. I have a lot of faith in the Zoe project. Well, we've covered a lot about what we do as ZOS systems programmers. So, if you're um, expecting to join the world of ZOS systems programmers or get some nostalgia, that is a little bit of what it's what it's like on the inside beyond the job description. So ask, ask me anything you'd like. Thanks.